My name is David Chan, and I'm honoured to be given the opportunity to share with you our review on radiofrequency ablation in Barrett's esophagus. I'm the senior author of our article entitled Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of the Effectiveness of Radiofrequency Ablation in Low-Grade Dysplastic Barrett's Esophagus. The lead author is Gargi Pandi, and my co-authors are Mubashe Mullah, Wynne Lewis and Antonio Foliaki, and we are from the University Hospital of Wales in Cardiff in the United Kingdom. The management of patients with low-grade dysplastic Barrett's esophagus remains controversial. This is despite recently published trials on the efficacy of RFA in reducing the risk of progression to high-grade dysplasia or adenocarcinoma in these patients. The main reasons are the difficulty in quantifying the exact risk of progression as the diagnosis of low-grade dysplasia can be challenging, even for expert pathologists as evidenced by the wide range of published risks of progression from 0.6% up to 20% per year. We therefore conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of eight studies, two of which were randomized control trials and six were observational cohort studies, which included over 600 patients with low-grade dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. Just over 400 patients were treated with RFA, and the remainder underwent surveillance endoscopy. We found that after a median follow-up of 26 months, RFA achieved complete eradication of intestinal metaplasia and dysplasia in 88 and 97% respectively. When compared with surveillance endoscopy, RFA resulted in significantly lower rates of progression to high-grade dysplasia and cancer. These patients still require surveillance endoscopy as we found the risk of recurrence of intestinal metaplasia was 5.6% and the recurrence of dysplasia was just under 10%. The most common adverse event was stricture formation, which occurred in 6% of patients. Bleeding and perforation occurred in less than 1%. We have shown that in the short term, radiofrequency ablation is safe and effectively eradicates low-grade dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. What we need to know now is the long-term durability and cost-effectiveness of RFA in these patients. Thank you for listening and I welcome any comments or queries.